All right, thanks for having me over to you. Thanks for the last minute invitation. Um, yeah, so I'm going to discuss a kind of side topic here, not really related to to the printing, open printing uh, topic, um, but more like a, a, a side issue that we have <laughs> with uh, with container, with OCI containers, but it's also true with the uh, snaps. It just happens that I, I'm managing the OCI parts of container images uh, at Canonical. So, um, actually, I, I'm giving tomorrow evening a longer version of this talk. Um, so you're welcome to yes. join this idea. On the open summit. source summit. Yeah. <laughs> Although you have to cross two bridges and uh, it's going to be there. Um, all right, so first, why would you want to do that? Um, the, the main reason that first initiated all the discussions, we have to make our content images smaller, were security concerns. Um, with containerization and the performance concerns of the bits that you were included in, in your application. So you were included like a lot of open source uh, dependencies, a lot of operating system libraries in your containers that you were actually not using to run your containers. A bit like if you were uh, containerizing VMs and not uh, applications, which was actually the the name of the talk that I, I will reference later. So the first thing to state is that containerizing something is not enough to make it secure. And that is the, the initial point of the, the discussion. Um, it gets worse because when you're abstracting the dependencies that you're including in your uh, containers, you're also abstracting the vulnerabilities that you're including in your containers. And through this layering mechanism, but it's true through any development that includes open source libraries, you're uh, including a lot of shared dependencies. Um, therefore, you're including this, the same vulnerabilities everywhere in all of the container images that you're shipping. Um, making them more vulnerable. So, oh, and there's this last point uh, that is keeping up to date your container images is harder than keeping up to date software in general. Um, that also makes it, oh, that's not moving. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I wanted, there's this GIF that I love. If you come tomorrow, it's going to be moving. So <laughs> you can know that is. Anyway, um, the point was running something in the container is not secure. The, from there, we go to what do we do, right? Um, and there's a correlation between the size of the image and the number of CVEs. So it's just a correlation. Tomorrow we're going to dive uh, deeper, but today let's just admit that if you make your image smaller, you're going to have less vulnerabilities in it. Um, there's other things that matter even more that are provenance of your, your content, um, the developer ecosystem. If something is hard to develop, it's probably hard to secure as well, and then developers find workarounds, and it's, it gets worse. So having something that is easy to develop is uh, also a nice securization approach. But still, reducing the size benefits uh, security, and as you were saying, especially in, in the devices world, you're trying also to reduce the resources consumption, so memory, whether it's uh, storage or just um, um, memory, like memory consumption. So making images smaller has all of these benefits, so it's probably worth doing it. Um, there's an, a great talk that was given, I think, six years ago or something like that, uh, by Matt Moore, who was at Google at the time. Um, that was called Google Distroless, and uh, as I was saying before, containerizing apps and not virtual machines. Um, and he introduced something that was basically an OCI container with nothing more than just the, the runtime dependencies of your processes. So it had no package manager, no shell. It was super small. It was useful uh, only for running like this specific process that you were uh, containerizing. But the, the downsides of that is that it was super complex to use, uh, complex to build, complex to derive. And uh, the side effects is that, well, the consequences of that is that it's been six years and basically not no one, but very few people are actually using uh, the distroless ideas and concepts today, uh, which is very sad to see, but unfortunate uh, consequence of being hard to use. So the question remains that uh, could we have the advantages of a Linux distribution? So all of these dependencies being resolved, maintained, etc., but without having all the overhead while containerizing, oops. And uh, very recently, actually, we introduced something that I think was worth bringing to uh, this audience in this room, uh, and maybe discussing later for uh, containerizing the, the open printing uh, applications. It's uh, what we call chiseled Ubuntu container images. 
which is basically, uh, you could also call it Ubuntu Distress Images. And it's for something. So you, you, as I was saying, you in include the dependencies that you need for running a, a specific process or application. So obviously you're uh, chiseling the, the Ubuntu distribution just for this very specific process. In the example that I have on the screen, we announced that I think like two weeks ago, and it was for the .NET uh, developers community. And uh, it's very small, but the images that we have there, they are about exactly very so small that you don't see the, the dot, so it can seem pretty big. Uh, they are about five megabytes, not 500. <laughs> so that's like super small compared to the uh, Ubuntu images that you already know today, just because it only includes the files uh, that are needed there. And the whole difference that we have with what Google announced six years ago is that we are using this chisel um, kind of package manager from scratch that should not ship, you don't ship with the image. So as you can see on the Actually, you don't see it, but uh, <laughs> there's an example that should be a multi-stage build. Um, you, you're going to do it in two stages, one with chisel from the full Ubuntu image, you're chiseling Ubuntu, and then you're copying over the chiseled Ubuntu um, files that you're needing for running your application. So yeah, but basically that was, I think that's, yeah, that's all I had. Uh, there should be, a lot of unknowns that would be answered by the much longer presentation of tomorrow, but happy to discuss and take questions as well. Are there any questions? Uh, so yes. when you're, okay. uh, so when you talk about stripping, are you stripping? Uh, is it literally you just delete, you install whatever the packages are, and then you delete everything other than what the files were installed? Is that how it works? The chiseling? Yeah, and yes and no. So, um, in fact, you only install the files that you need. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't have this because I was trying to make the slides smaller, so I was not diving deeper in it. Uh, but what it does is there, there's almost a second distribution definition somewhere alongside the packages that says in this package, can I zoom on the slides? I don't think I can. You can, there's a zoom button, yeah. That is nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, there's a slice definition that says in this package, I have different slices. You can think of uh, very stupid, but it works examples, uh, would be like documentation, binaries, configuration. And then you're saying to this uh, from scratch package manager that we call Chisel, I only want to install the documentation or the binaries from this package. And I said it's, it's almost the another distribution because it also knows the dependencies. It's not only it knows the files that are in the slice, it knows that okay. the like, documentation slice does not depend on anything, yeah. but the binary slice might depend on another binary from another uh, package. So it's a lot of additional work on top of the existing distribution, but it's basically inheriting from it. And it was done manually. Like if you look at the, the Google Distress implementation that was done by the Google team, they defined all of that with Bazel manually. And everyone is doing that in their own Distress-ish images. Yeah. Um, so here it's a bit different because the definition of the slices, they are stored in a centralized place yeah. alongside the packages. So it's shared between yeah. everyone. So, so I mean, I guess you could refer to this as, I guess, as like sub package because in, I mean, because there is a push in other like in regular container images for regular distributions, there is a push to remove. Sorry, this is going to turn into a container talk. I apologize, but the, 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 I'm just wondering because I'm not going to be here tomorrow for the thing. But um, the I get it seems to me like it's basically um, sub packages. Like you would have like a doc socket package and a config sub package, but this is like slightly different. Where I guess slightly less overhead to maintain. Maybe I don't know. I mean, like for RPM, I presume for Debian the same thing. For RPM, you can define it all in one thing. So I guess this is like another way of looking at the same problem. I guess. Because there's been a push, for, at least in for OpenSUSE and SUSE, to push for, especially for like the smaller distributions, like regular distributions as well as for containers, to try to like split up these giant packages into smaller ones. But they would be actual packages. They're all defined in the same build, not all built in once, but they're they're like smaller packages. So does Debian have that, or does Ubuntu have that, or and or is this like a slightly different way of doing the same thing? I guess is what I'm wondering. Yes, I think it is. Um, but it is. Maintained separately, right? So right, it's yeah, not yeah. part of, uh, it's not upstream to Debian. Okay. Could be someday that it's included with the Debian packages, but for now we did it as a separate thing just to make it happen. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it's defined separately. 
Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Because we we don't we don't we're not downstream from anything else. Okay. Then we we can, we can just make it from thing. Okay. I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Is this all based on the original Debian packages, and then it's defined? These files are for documentation. These are binaries, and then the dip these Debian packages they are taken files off which are not needed and kept files in which are needed. And then when this happened, probably this drops some dependencies. For example, if you have a package, if you had a Debian package, which, which uh, contains libcups filters 2.0 and libppd in one package, we assume this, this will never happen. Uh, and now we have an application which does not need libppd, and so you split away, you chisel away libppd. Would this automatically also take away all the dependencies of libppd and keep only the dependencies of libcups filters? I think if I followed the example correctly, yes. Um, I just noticed something because it's interesting how you how you phrased it. It's that needed is very subjective, right? So it's you cannot completely automatically say um, th this is unneeded uh, from just the the upstream Debian package definition. You cannot just just uh, skim through it and say that some things are unneeded because it's really dependent on what you intend to do later. So it has to be done by someone who knows what they are doing. But uh, if I follow the example that you were saying, if 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 you say that your library does not need the other one. Of course, it, it breaks the depends like the, on the screen that would be the this link. It breaks it, and it breaks it, it breaks the link, and uh, it only keeps the, the the dependencies that you effectively mentioned. Yes, I, I mean more or less if you have two libraries which come in one Debian package, and you know you need only one for your application. You know that you need only one, and you say in the definition of your of your chiseling for your container that library B is not needed, so I shave it off. I don't include it in the container, even if it's contained in the Debian package of library A. And now I have dropped out library B because I don't need it for my container, but library B depends depends on library C and library D, and so therefore the whole Debian package, from which I take only a part, depends on library C and library D. But now as I've uh, whipped out library B, there's no, no, library A does not depend on library C and library D. So what you would then there be a mechanism which recognizes I've thrown away library B, so the library the dependency on library C and D is uh, falling down is not needed anymore. Yeah, I think it's yes. So what I understand is A, B are the, in the same package, and C is another package. Yes, and C and D are the packages right. which are in the list of dependencies right. of the first package which contains A on and B. Right, so now what we would have is A is what we call one package slice, B is another package slice of the same Debian package AB, and they all have their own dependencies. So slice A does depend on, I don't know, C, but B doesn't, for example, or it was the other way, but anyway. Yes, yes. For example, A, A depends on C and B it depends on D. Yep. And I say, I throw away B because I don't need it for my application. So D must automatically fall down. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Any other questions? Any external questions? Remote. Still no, there's seven more minutes. Can you catch yes. So we are just like slicing the, the Debian packages into smaller sub packages? Yeah, that's as simple as that. <laughs> Guys, so 
It's also a bit more complex in the sense that you're just not creating. Okay, yeah, that's just because I don't have the feedback, so it's really, really weird. It's not as simple as just we're creating smaller packages. Like you could say, okay, let's just repackage all of the Debian packages into smaller yes, pieces. Yes. But that's not exactly what it is, because like you could have, I think, yeah, on the picture you can see it a bit. You can have overlap between them. So it's more seeing like, okay, I'm I'm seeing this package, like the GDC package. And as a knowledgeable developer, I know that these files go together because they are like the same type of files. Like as you were saying, one is li like one sub library of the, the package, et cetera. So I can describe that in into further details. That's what the slices are about. And then a downstream developer that is just Dockerizing his application, it's much easier for them to say, "I'm just dependent on this slice of the package." Because if, if they wanted to do that before, they'd have to say this slice instead of just saying this slice. They would have to say, like, "This is these files from the Debian package." So now, now what we are doing is we are removing the responsibility of the, doing that and moving it to another place that is shared amongst the developers so that some of them who knows are going to do the slicing and the other ones who don't really know as much about the Debian packages, they're not going to have to do the slicing, but they're just going to say, um, I know that I'm dependent only on the binaries because I'm doing a runtime package, for example. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like, sounds like separate pack, uh, uh, packaging system, yes? Yeah. Almost. With 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 larger gra gran granularity, I mean, with with, with smaller uh, yeah. packages. Yeah. I, I mean, it's very similar to that. Like the the, the implementation, we're really reliant on the the fact that we have the DPKG uh, database existing, so we are using everything that is already there, um, and not creating something completely independent yeah it is really from from his answer before my my understanding is that the real reason for doing it this way rather than having sub packages because if you had sub packages you were basically forking the entirety of debian yeah. and you would not be able to use the original packaging this yeah. so effectively it's sub packages but it is not inside the whatever spec whatever the spec file is called in, in dpkg where like because then you wouldn't be able to maintain it so you have to have it as like a separate thing but it is basically sub packages. Is my is my understanding. Yeah, yeah. Like we didn't want to fork the distribution. Right. Yeah. No. Of course. It would, that would be. Yeah. That would be <laughs> a lot of a lot of work. <laughs> There's still a lot of work that it's work that was already done anyway, just in a different place. So because you still have to define all of these slices, so there's still a lot of work needed. Right, but it's not like every single package change now needs to be like yes. reapplied and rebased on top of the forked ones, right? Yeah. So like it's it's just <laughs> here's a list of files and so on and so on. Yeah. 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 Though you still have to check each update and the other, presumably. And in the future, you can imagine that it's also easier to automate saying, like, I don't know, when we, I'm thinking Ubuntu, but it could be other distributions. Uh, but when we're going to from 22.04 to 24.04, um, if one package has changed, it's much easier just to update the slices than if you had a completely separate distribution, it would be like a completely separate release. OK, thank you. Yeah. Does it all get um, uh, out of interest? Because uh, many, many years ago, uh, I, I was working trying to get OCI images to have less annoying duplication issues and so on and so on, and a bunch of other inefficiencies. None of that ever panned out. But I'm just interested. Um, uh, presumably, you can create layered images with this chiseling thing, or is it, or is it just one layer? For well, now, the implementation is one layer for yeah. technical reasons. OK, OK. Um, if, to, to, to go into deeper details, the reason is we are not using the DPKG database. So right. we're not preserving it because um, it has a lot of downsides on container images. But we do plan to to be able to to install one thing and then another layer and install another thing. But at the moment, you have to install everything at once. And it yeah. does one big layer without, like, it's, it's just done. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Uh, Yes, our session and with this the broadcast will end in two minutes and the recording. So everything which we dis which we continue to discuss now will not get recorded and not broadcasted. And I don't know whether the connection with the remote participants will stay stay up. So 
I only want to tell, even if we, we continue discussing afterwards, thank you very much to all for this great uh, open printing microconference, our fourth microconference on Linux Plumbus. And unfortunately, we had not very many people here. All the economy class is empty. It's not very attractive printing, but uh, at least we have we have uh, presented what what we want to do in the future and what are our ideas brought in some new ideas and so it 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 was it it, it was really worth it and it, it it was all great and thank you very much again and we will do it next year again Yes, we can continue the discussion. Perhaps the remote participants will stay in the line and not being kicked out. So, but it's not recorded. But if you want to continue the, the discussion, simply use the microphone so that our our remote participants can continue listening and participating. Uh, we will actually need to exit the BBB session. Right, the other thing. Yeah, we actually have to close it now, apparently. I mean, yeah. you, you say that. <laughs> um, we have to exit the uh, BBB session because we need to close the uh, rooms later. Yes. And please, please, please leave session, not, not end session. And save all the. Um, notes before you leave okay. it. Copy the notes and okay. save them somewhere that we don't lose anything. Make sure that it's all conserved. Oh, that's, um, yeah. uh, no problem. So, do you have a copy of the